Hey everybody, welcome to Engineering Academy and in this video I'll be talking about the design for shear. Alright, so let me first give you the introduction of what a shear force is. Alright, so let us assume a beam like uh, this right so this is our beam you can see here and this is our one support and uh, this can be another support right and it may be loaded like this right so this is our load external load right so if we cut the section at uh, this point and uh, if you draw the free body diagram you will see like this right so this is your reaction over here and uh, this is your load and uh, there will be internal reaction so this one is the external reaction right so that is induced at the supports right so there uh, the, if you cut the section then you will see the internal reactions right so you will see the vertical shear force and the bending moment right so this force which acts parallel to this section of this beam is known as the shear force right so if we draw the section of this beam so it will be somewhat like this right so this is the section of the beam and uh, this shear force which is indicated by a uh, V acts parallel to this section right so uh, this is the definition of the shear force it is an internal reaction that is induced uh, in a beam or it might be in a slab right so in, in any kind of structure so it is induced right okay so uh, next thing is that uh, so we got a shear force V on this area right so suppose that the breadth of this beam is B and the effective depth is D right so in that case the shear stress which is noted by tau is given by tau is equal to uh, v that is shear force divided by B times of D right so if we divide the shear force by the sectional area we get the shear stress okay so uh, let me tell you that uh, this shear stress you know the formula that we have used here is just for uh, the calculation purpose only uh, for doing the you know design of the beam or slab or maybe the columns right so in reality the distribution of this shear stress is complex and you cannot use just this formula to calculate this uh, the value of the shear stress all right okay so uh, right so the presence of shear stress reduces the strength of concrete in compression as well as in tension right so next thing is the diagonal tension cracks uh, occur in RCC beams and in order to prevent such cracks shear reinforcement is provided right so uh, okay so let's delete it now let us assume a beam right so this is our beam all right so this is our beam right so due to the external loading that we have over here uh, what we uh, get is that there may be diagonal tension cracks that are developed here right so you know if uh, yeah, the loads are heavy and uh, the beam is not uh, you know is, is strong enough to carry these loads in that case uh, the diagonal tension might occur right so these cracks propagate uh, like this right so at 45 degree near the support and they are nearly vertical or perpendicular uh, at the mid portion right all right so in order to prevent the occurrence of these diagonal cracks what do we do we provide the shear reinforcement in form of vertical stirrups like this right okay so we provide a uh, shear reinforcement like this right so now our purpose in design of the beam or design for the shear reinforcement is that we have to find the spacing of the stirrups this, mean, this means that at what position uh, these two stirrups must be set apart right so that is the spacing of these two stirrups so we have to calculate that spacing so how we do that uh, we're going to discuss here right so shear reinforcement calculation now nominal shear stress is given by so we already know this formula tau v that is nominal shear stress is equal to vu by pd where vu is the factor shear force it means that so we got external load here right so this is our w that is the external load and due to this external load we have got shear force induced inside as an internal reaction in the beam right so due to that shear force what we have we have got the shear stress so that shear stress is known as the nominal shear stress and it is given by tau v is equal to vu that is the factor shear force right divided by b into d that is the sectional area of the beam right okay so the maximum shear stress is given by table 20 
20 of IS 456 2000. So, uh, so if you see the table 20 of uh, IS 456 2000, you're gonna see this one, right? So, it means that uh, suppose uh, the grade of concrete is M20 and it says a uh, maximum shear uh, stress is 2.8 Newton per mm square. So, what does this mean? So, it means that if your grade of concrete is M20, uh, it may be M25 or M30. So, I'm just taking an example of M20 here, right? So, if your grade of concrete is M20, then the maximum shear strength of that concrete is 2.8 newton per mm square so this concrete or or this the you know, any structure that is made by using m20 grade of concrete it cannot take a shear force greater than 2.8 newton per mm square right suppose that uh, the value of tau v is 1.5 newton per mm square so the value of this tau v is 1.5 newton per mm square if the value of uh, you know this tau v is suppose that you are using m20 grade of concrete and the value of external the shear stress the normal shear stress uh, turns out to be 3 newton per mm square in that case you have to redesign the section that means uh, you have to either increase the breadth or increase the depth of the beam right so in, in, in this case uh, let us suppose that a tau v is equal to 1.5 newton per mm square right so uh, so we do not design the shear reinforcement for the entire tau v right so we got a uh, nominal shear stress that is due to the external load as 1.5 newton per mm square and we know that we have to design the shear stress in order to resist the shear stress uh, that is induced due to the external loads right okay so uh, but we do not have to design the shear stirrups for the entire tau v value that we get due to the external loads because uh, because uh, the shear strength of the beam is induced uh, you know inherent so there is inherent shear induced due to the longitudinal reinforcement so th this longitudinal reinforcement that runs throughout the beam right so there is cranking over here so due to the crank as well as this longitudinal power this beam already has some shear strength capacity so for that value we do not have to design the shear stirrups right so how much value uh, does the uh, does this uh, beam has due to this longitudinal reinforcement is given by table 19 of is 456 2000 right so are you getting me so I, I hope you are getting me right so this this might be a bit confusing uh, so so I'm not covering the numerical here I'm just going to through the theory because you know you must have first a good concept of theory theory before you uh, actually go into the numerical right so uh, you know uh, without without knowing the theory uh, and solving the numerical is like uh, walking into a, a dark tunnel right so you might get into the other side of the tunnel but you will never know what is inside of the tunnel similarly you might get your answer or you might get a uh, max in the examination but you will never know the concept behind the formula that you use or the behind the procedure that you follow right so uh, we need to have a good theory real concept before we can actually go into the numerical and that's what I am going to you know trying to deliver here all right okay so uh, I hope you are getting it right so uh, if you're not you can just uh, rewind this video and watch it again and and uh, that will make your concepts a bit more clear so I mean to say is that uh, this beam without this uh, you know shear stirrups have some got shear strength right uh, shear strength means the capacity of this beam to resist the shear stress due to the external loads right so that shear strength is due to the longitudinal reinforcement that the beam has right and that value of shear strength that it already has is given by table 19 of is 456 2000 code all right so here is the table 19 and suppose that we are using m20 grid of concrete and the percentage of steel is 0.50 percent so this is just for an example and how to calculate the percentage of steel i'll cover in a few minutes later Alright, so now uh, the percentage of steel is 0 0.50 uh, and uh, the grade of concrete is M20. So the design shear strength of concrete here is 0 0.48 Newton per mm square, right? Okay, so this shear strength value is already in that beam without the shear stirrups, right? So now uh, let us see how we calculate the percentage of steel. Alright, so percentage of steel is given by area of steel divided by b into d that is breadth of the beam times the effective depth into the 100 right so we know the percentage of steel is given by this formula right so now how do we calculate the area of steel okay so for that uh, let us take an example let me delete it and uh, let us draw a section of a beam right so this is a beam right and uh, suppose that it has got uh, four longitudinal bars like this right so this is a section right and uh, so each bar is of 20 mm. Right, so how many bars do we have? Four bars. 
and the area of each bar is 4 times and area of each bar is pi by 4 times 20 square right so pi by 4 times 20 square so this is the area of steel so this whole thing 4 into pi by 4 into 20 square is the area of steel of these four longitudinal bars all right so this is how we calculate the area of steel and if you divide this area of steel by the sectional area of the beam and if you multiply it to 100 you will get the percentage of steel all right so now uh, we know that uh, this uh, design uh, so this uh, value uh, it the beam already has right and the value that the for for which the shear is up is to be designed is 1.5 newton per mm square right so 1.5 newton per mm square is the shear stress due to the external loads and strength of the beam without the shear stirrups is this value and so so the shear stress for which the reinforcement is to be provided is nominal shear stress that is 1.5 minus the design shear strength that we get from this table all right so let this uh, value uh, be x i mean this value the shear stress for which the reinforcement is to be provided let this value be x right so now the uh, shear force for which the shear reinforcement is to be uh, designed is denoted by VUS and given by VUS is equal to X times that is this shear stress times PD so you know uh, shear stress is a force by area so uh, this force is equal to shear stress times the area right so this is just a simple uh, you know uh, calculation right so now from the clause 40.4 of IS 456 2000 now if you see this clause you will get a uh, like this right so it has given the formula to calculate uh, the spacing of the shear stress in different cases for example if you if you are using uh, the vertical stirrups the, in that case in that case the shear force VUS for which the sh uh, shear stirrups are to be designed is given by 0.87 FYASB uh, D by SB so in this equation we know VUS right so you can get from the calculation we know what 0.87 is right we so FY is the yield strength of the rebar that is used for example if you are using a 415 uh, mm bar right so in that case uh, the yield strength is uh, 415 Newton per mm square same goes for the 500 bar right so it is a 500 Newton per mm square right so here ASV is the area of the stirrup so we'll uh, let us see how we calculate this value and d is the effective depth of the beam and sp here is the spacing of those stirrups now from this equation everything is known right so we only need this sp value all right so if you see here uh, fy is the characteristic strength or that is the yield strength of the stirrup or the bent of reinforcement we shall not be taken greater than 450 newton per mm square so the yield strength of this uh, the re the bar that is used as stirrups should not be greater than 450 newton per mm square all right okay so now now uh, how we calculate the asb suppose that uh, so before going into you know how we calculate uh, the uh, area of the area of these stirrups uh, let us first see how many types of these stirrups do we have right okay so uh, there is a type of stirrup where it is a two-legged stirrup right so in that case what happens is that so you got a beam like this right so uh, if we see the section of the beam you're gonna see something like this right so you got uh, this is your stirrup right so this ring that you see is your stirrup and so this stirrup has one leg two leg which are effective in uh, resisting the shear stress due to the external load so this kind of stirrup is called a two-legged stirrup right so if you got two stirrups in a beam just like this so this is uh, one stirrup this outer one and this is a uh, inner stirrup so if you got uh, two stirrups like this and what how many legs do you have one leg two leg three legs and four legs right so this is a four legged stirrup suppose that we are using a two legged stirrup so in that case we calculate the area of stirrup like this so two legged stirrup so it's two times pi by four into the uh, square of the diameter of the bar that we are using suppose that we are using a 10 mm bar as a stirrup so in that case it's two into pi by four into 10 squared and whatever value we get it is the area of that stirrup right so we know everything from here so in that case uh, in that situation we can get PUS or no we can get SP this is the value of the spacing of the stirrups similarly for the inclined stirrup you can uh, calculate uh, you know the uh, value of uh, the spacing using this formula right
this is our beam right so this is the longitudinal reinforcement that you see the straight horizontal lines and the vertical lines is actually the shear reinforcement right okay so this, the spacing of the shear reinforcement is not constant throughout the beam because uh, the shear stress is concentrated high at the supports and is low at the mid span right the portion where the shear stress is maximum is known as the critical uh, section of the beam and from the face of the support up to that critical section the spacing is laser at compared to the other sections all right okay so for example uh, so this is the this is the support right this is the column and this is the support and at a distance 2d that is two times the effective depth of the beam if there is a heavy load right suppose that uh, the depth of the beam uh, this is 500 uh, mm and at a distance of 2 into 500 that is 1000 mm from uh, the face of this uh, the support right somewhere here right so if there is a heavy load somewhere here then up to that distance the spacing of the stirrup must be closer and the uh, the stirrup must be closer and again uh, same for this support as well and in the mid span the spacing must be farther so so how much closer and how much farther so we will uh, learn it in the total detailing of the beam right so for now we must know that the spacing of the stirrups is closer at the critical sections and is farther at the mid span all right Okay, so this much for this video. This is all the theoretical background that we need for the design of this year's stirrups. Hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching. Take care.